Good morning. How are you all doing? Good. Um, I am super excited to welcome um, the Sturz family back. We're glad to have you all here today. Um, I missed it the last time y'all visited, but I'm glad I'm here today. Um, this morning, um, there's not a whole lot of a way of announcements other than we do have the messy games for the kids this afternoon from 3 to 6. That is still going to go on regardless of the weather. So we're going to get messy anyway, so the rain really won't matter. Um, so that is going on this afternoon. You can look on the back of on your bulletin to kind of catch on some of the other ones um, that are coming on a little later. Some prayers this morning. Miss Edith Warren is in the hospital, so we want to keep her on our prayer list. We know it's something related to heart, lung, but they're trying to figure out what the best treatment is right now. So um, keep her in your prayers. Still uh, remember to pray for Carlton. Um, we got the update from Nikki online that he was finally awake, but I haven't had much of an update past that. So he was, him and his wife um, visited us. We're living here kind of in the off season, but had moved back up north um, probably a couple of years ago before COVID. So keep them in your prayers as well. And I am going to ask that we keep Brian in our prayers this week. He has his swallow study on Tuesday. Um, this will hopefully keep him... Um, if he passes, he can start the process of being able to eat again. So we can get rid of peg tubes, get rid of, rid of the liquid diet he's on. <laughs> so just start the process of getting back to normal. So pray that that swallow study goes well um, and that, that everything else. Also keep Lou in your prayers as she goes through her trials um, with the cancer and everything. So does anyone else have any other prayer requests? Any other announcements? Let's pray. Creator God, thank you so much for bringing everybody here today. Thank you for the weather. Thank you for each and every day we get to take in. Help us to spread your word and keep it in our hearts always. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Our psalm reading today comes from Psalm 68, 1 through 10. And I've got a lot of different passages marked in my Bible, so I'm trying to make sure I get to the right one because I get to do a lot today. So it says, Rise up, O God, and scatter your enemies. Let those who hate God run for their lives. Blow them away like smoke. Melt them like wax in a fire. Let the wicked perish in the presence of God. Let, but let the godly rejoice. Let them be glad in God's presence. Let them be filled with joy. Sing praises to God and to his name. Sing loud praises to him who rides the clouds. His name is the Lord. Rejoice in his presence. Father to the fatherless, defender of widows, this is God whose dwelling is holy. God places the lonely in families. He sets the prisoners free and gives them joy. But he makes the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. O oh God, when you led your people out of Egypt, when you marched through the dry wasteland, the earth trembled and the heavens poured down rain. Before you, the God of Sinai, before God, the God of Israel, you sent abundant rain, O oh God, to refresh the weary land. There your people finally settled, and with a bountiful harvest, O oh God, you provided for your needy people. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, if everyone will stand and join us in singing, God is so good. Amazing love that welcomes me, the kindness of mercy that bought with blood wholeheartedly my soul undeserved. Behold the 
sure this life brings suffering, Lord, I will remember what Calvary has bought for me, both now and forever. God, you're so prayer time this morning I want everyone to turn to the back of their bulletin and there is our prayer list so for the next couple of minutes if you will just pick some of the names kind of go through the list and pray silently for two three however long you have time for of the names on the list let's pray God, we ask that you be with each and every one of these on this list and those that are not. We ask that you be with the ones who are hurting, who need healing, and who just sometimes need a hug. Lord, we ask for your blessings in all that we do. We ask for you to keep us in your arms and let us know that you are there in every step. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, now if you will stand and join us in singing Abba Father, hymn number 81.
seated. Our New Testament reading this morning comes from 1 Peter, chapter 4, 12 through 14, and then chapter 5, 6 through 11. Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you're going through, as if something strange were happening to you. Instead, be glad, for these trials make you partners with Christ in his suffering, so that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it is revealed to all the world. If you are insulted because you bear the name of Christ, you will be blessed, for the glorious Spirit of God rests upon you. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time he will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. All power to him forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Praise his holy name. Now, if I can have all my kids come down to the front. Good morning. You good? Y'all good? Yeah, good. Good, good, good. Now, let me ask a question. Do you guys know what it means to be different? What does it mean to be different, Julie? Oh, not Julie. Joanna. Sorry. It's okay. Do you know what it means to be different, Kenna? No, sorry, my thing is falling out. Does it mean, what does it mean to be a like, to be like something? I got a quiet group today. Y'all are. What does it mean to be the same? All right, let me ask a different question. This way you just have to raise your hand. Do you like being like other people? Yes, okay. Do you like being different than other people? Yeah, both are good. Very good. If you're all the same, then you can't tell who's who. Very good, Joanna. I'm going to read the story. This is my favorite Dr. Seuss story ever that I'm going to read y'all. It's one that has always stuck with me, and I have loved it from the beginning. And I have, like, this huge Dr. Seuss book that has a bunch of different stories. I don't have the story by itself. So bear with me. I don't know that I'll be able to show you the pictures because the book is heavy, but I'll try. This one is called The Sneetches. Let's get rid of this first. This is called The Sneetches. My favorite, favorite, favorite story of Dr. Seuss. Now the star-bellied Sneetches had bellies with stars. The plain-bellied Sneetches had none upon theirs. Those stars weren't so big. They were really so small. You might think such a thing wouldn't matter at all. But because they had stars, all the star-bellied Sneetches would brag. We're the best kind of sneetches on the beaches. With their snoots in the air, they would sniff and they'd snort. We'll have nothing to do with the plain-bellied sort. Then whenever they met some, they would, when they were out walking, they'd hike right on past them without even talking. When the star-bellied children went out to play ball, could a plain belly get in the game? Not at all. You could only play if your bellies had stars and the plain-bellied children had none upon theirs. When the Starbelly Sneetches had Frankfurter roast, or picnics, or parties, or marshmallow toast, they never invited the plain bellied Sneetches. They, never Im- they left them out cold in the dark on the beaches. They kept them away, never let them come near, and that's how they traded them year after year. Then one day it seems, while the plain bellied Sneetches were moping and doping along alone on the beaches, 
just sitting there wishing their bellies had stars. A stranger zipped up in the strangest of cars. My friends, he announced in a voice clear and clean, my name is Sylvester McMonkey McBean, and I've, ne I've heard of your troubles and I've heard you're unhappy, but I can fix that. I'm the fix-it-up chappy. I've come here to help you. I have what you need, and my prices are low, and I work at great speed, and my work is 100% guaranteed. Then quickly, Sylvester McMonkey McBean put together a very peculiar machine, and he said, you want stars like a belly star snitch? My friends, you can have them for just $3 each. Just pay me your money and hop right aboard. So they climbed inside. Then the big machine roared, and it clonked, and it bonked, and it jerked, and it burped, and it bopped them about. But the thing really worked. When the plain belly sneeches popped out, they had stars. They actually did. They had stars upon thars. Then they yelled at the ones who had stars at the start. We're exactly like you. You can't tell us apart. We're all just the same. Now, you snooty old smarts. And now you can go to, we can go to your Frankfurter parties. Good grief, groaned the ones with stars at the first. We're still the best sneeches, and they are the worst. But now, how in the world will we know? They all frowned. If which kind is what, or the other way around. Then up came McBean with a very sly wink, and he said, things are quite, not quite as bad as you think. So you don't know who's who? That is perfectly true. But come with me, friends. Do you know what I'll do? I'll make you again the best niches on beaches, and all it will cost you is $10 each. Belly stars are no longer in style, said McBean. When you need a trip through my star off machine, this wonderful contraption will take off the stars so you won't look like the sneetches who have them on theirs. And that handy machine, working very precisely, removed all the stars from the tummies quite nicely. Then with snoots in the air, they prayed it about and they opened their beaks and let out a shout. We know who is who. Now there isn't a doubt. The best kind of sneetches are sneetches without. Then, of course, those with stars all got frightfully mad. To be wearing a star now was frightfully bad. Then, of course, old Sylvester McMonkey McBean invited him into the star off machine. Then, of course, from then on, as you can probably guess, things got into a horrible mess. Then, when every last cent All of the rest of that day, on those wild screaming beaches, the fix-it-up chappy kept fixing up sneeches. Off again, on again, in again, out again. Through the machine, they raced around and about again, ch changing the stars every minute or two. They kept paying money, they kept running through, until neither the plane nor the star bellies knew whether this one was that one, or that one was this one, or which one was what one, what one was which. Then, when every last cent of their money was spent, the fix-it-up chappy packed up and he went. And he laughed as he drove in his car up the beach. They will never learn. No, you can't teach a sneech. But Mr. McBean was quite wrong. I'm quite happy to say that the sneeches got really quite smart on that day. That day, they decided that sneeches are sneeches, and no kind of sneech is the best on the beaches. That day, all the sneeches forgot about stars and whether they had one or not upon theirs. So, based off of what I just read, Dr. Seuss likes to teach a lesson. Do you know what that lesson was in the story? It's okay. I'll tell you. So it doesn't matter if you're the same or different. Like Julie said, do you remember what you said earlier? If everybody was exactly alike, 
you wouldn't be able to tell them apart, right? Right. It's okay to be different. But it's also okay, okay to be the same. Because all in all, we are the body of Christ. Christ loves us regardless whether we have stars on our bellies or not. We're all the same on a Christ umbrella. And he loves all of our differences and our likenesses. Okay? So remember, no matter what, God loves you. Every bit of you. Let's pray. Creator God, thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you for letting us be different. Thank you for letting us be the same. That regardless of what we are, we are your children and you love us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all are going to go with Miss Amanda.
Thank you, choir. That was beautiful. So Graham had asked me a few weeks ago to preach today, and I said, sure. Um, No problem. I I didn't have anything at the time going on um, other than, you know, being home with Brian and and helping take care of him. Um, And so I was like, oh, I have plenty of time to to pray about it and to um, get it together. And then this week came, and I realized I hadn't even thought about it. And with everything I have going on between doctor's appointments and, and work and everything else, it's just been a little chaotic at home. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, I have to get it done this week. I have to, like, s- s- sit down, pray about it, figure out which direction God's is that wanting me to go. Wednesday rolls around, and I still have not come up with anything. And they're asking me for sermon titles and scripture, and I'm like... I have nothing, nothing to provide. So that's why there's nothing in the bulletin because I did not have anything. And then Wednesday afternoon, like the last 30 minutes of work, I'm trying to get Brian out of the recliner. My work computer is sitting right there and I knock over a table and um, while I'm trying to get Brian out of the recliner. And on this table is Brian's weights that he uses for PT. And you would know those weights fell on my work computer. I wanted to cry, (laughs) y'all. I wanted, I had 30 minutes left in my day to try to get up with someone to say, can you please be in the office tomorrow morning so I can take my computer to you? Hard drive was good. The screen was done. The screen was done. Um, But we got it all done. We got it fixed. My mom came and saved the day and stayed with Brian on Thursday so I could be in work for the the morning to get my computer redone. But it was a week, let me tell you. We had to cancel one of his appointments because of that. and, And... Thursday night comes around, and I still do not have anything to talk about this morning. And I'm like, I'm starting to panic a little bit. <laughs> I'm getting a little stressed. And, um, and I'm like, and even now, today, today, I do have a message for you. We won't just talk about me not having a message. I do have a message. Um, it is definitely one that God's going to have to take control of and make it his, um, because I feel like it's a little all over the place, so I do apologize. But again... It's not about my words, it's definitely about God's. And so hopefully God will take it like he always does and take control of this. So I do apologize a little bit for the scatteredness this morning. It's been a, it's been a fun week, let me tell you. Um, uh, and, but again, God's got this. He always has and always does. Um, and obviously I read the story this morning because that is actually what my sermon is on, is the Sneetches. Um, And I wasn't kidding when I said it is literally my favorite Dr. Seuss book. Um, uh, And of all that he has, that is my favorite and always has been. I mean, you look at the Sneetch, and it is such a silly little yellow long-necked creature. Um, And they're really just just little silly bird-looking things. And they live on this beautiful beach. But they're different because we've got stars and you don't. So we're better than the rest. And they enjoy that fun frivolity of being better than the rest. But it takes one man to come along and say, ha, to the non-stars and say, I can fix this problem for you. Pay me money and I'll put stars on your bellies. I'll make you just like them. Of course, that's exactly what they did. Every single one of them. Here's my money. They threw it at him. And then in the reverse, when the star-bellied Sneetches realized, hey, we're not different or special anymore. That we can't, no, 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 we can't have this. So give me $10 and I'll fix it and take off your stars. I'll fix this problem too. So McBean did his thing. You know, and they threw the $10 at him. Notice the price went up. Threw the money at him. And then it just kind of went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Until really and honestly you couldn't tell in the end, who was who? Was he, or were you originally a star belly or not? And it didn't matter. That's what they came to learn. The victory was in that their differences didn't necessarily keep them or make them better or worse. They were all still the same with the differences. It's easy to dismiss the Sneetches as being these superficial creatures. But when you take a deeper look and realize we're a lot like 
the snitches in very, very many ways, it kind of starts to hit home some. And we're realizing that Dr. Seuss likes to prevent a fun little story, but in a lot of his stories, there's a good lesson behind them. We like to look at ourselves and think, I've got money, I've got a good job, a good house, good kids. I've got this going on. I'm much better than the person who can't keep a needle out of their arm or can't keep out of the bars. But then you have to stop and think, what got them to that point? What were they before that? Were they just as good as you? Were they just as good as had a good family? They were good kids originally. They're not really that different from us. Their struggles may be different. But in all honesty, they're not that different from us. We just like to think we're better. But in the grand scheme of things, we're all God's children. God loves each of us, regardless of what we have going on, regardless of whether we've got our stuff together or whether we don't. And a lot of us like to think we have our stuff together and realize we definitely don't. I don't. I definitely don't. And I want you guys to ask yourself, what extent are you going through in order to belong to what society says is good? What are you doing? In high school, I know for me, it was to be part of this preppy smart kid group. I was good as long as I was part of that group. Or if I had an East Pack or L.L. Bean in high school backpack. Those were the, the good backpacks. You had money if you had one of those. Even today, it's wearing the right clothes, having a good job, making sure that if you're in the middle of a conversation or a discussion, that if you may disagree, don't speak up because then you might get scorned because you disagree. How many of us kind of sit back and just listen without really taking a stand or speaking up and say, eh, that's not quite right? We like to sit back. Some of the, those were just the things I go through. What about y'all? How do y'all keep up appearances? Oh, he has a boat. Now I want a boat. Or, oh, they just got a really nice car. We need to upgrade ours now, too. And the list goes on and on and on to the point where we put the pressure on our kids too the kids have to be good kids they have to make good grades get into good schools they have to be good they can't struggle because if they struggle that means there's something wrong with our family but that's not the way it needs to be at all we try to hide behind the facade of the stars on our bellies look at our star don't look at us The evil one, the devil, loves to keep us distracted. Society says we need this, we need that. How many ads are in a regular TV program? Selling us stuff do we truly need? Like diet pills or the newest vacations or just any number of ads. Cleaning supplies, depending on what you're watching. Sports cars, golf clubs. You always need the next best thing because society is telling you you need the next best thing. Mr. McBean obviously was our real enemy for the Sneetches. The devil is our enemy. And he uses society to say, you can do better. You can be better. You can be better than this person over here. You can be better than that person over there. Pay money. You need more money. You need more money. You need more money. You're not making enough. We forget how to be happy with what God has truly given us. Has God blessed you with family? Whether it's blood family or church family. Has he blessed you with children? Again, whether they're your own children or ch church children. Someone asked me last week on Mother's Day if I had any, the kids asked me if I had any kids. I said, yes and no. Biologically, no, I don't have kids, but all of y'all are my kids. 
And they turned around and said, well, you get a plant because you're a mom then. That was because two of them did that Sunday morning. And I'm going to tell you what, that just blesses me up one side and down the other. Family is important. It doesn't have to be blood. Family is all of us. But here's the thing. A lot of people think that they don't have family. They think they need that what society is telling them they need. They need the cars. They need the house. They need the good job. They need to be able to go on European vacations or cruises or whatever all the time. And those are not bad things. Let me stress that. It's not necessarily bad things. But when you think you need those things to be, to create your facade, that you're happy and that you've got it going on and that you're solid, one little nick will make that crumble. It will make it all fall away. I thought I had it all together. And then September rolled around last year and showed me, yeah, you don't got it all together. You've got a lot of learning to do. One little thing, and it doesn't have to be something as, as big as, like, Brian getting sick. It can be something as little as a pay cut at your, at your job. It can be something as little as someone moved away, someone you loved and cared for moved away, and now life changed. Little things, and those seem big things. Those are kind of big things. But it doesn't take much for the facade we build to crumble. Our foundation gets tested in times like those. Where's our foundation? Is it on society? Is it with what society says we need? Is it with the world and says, yeah, you'll be okay, and then they drop you as soon as you don't meet their expectations? You know, work is... Your boss is great on your, your number one until you're not. And then they move on to the next number one. Work is going great until you don't perform. Or you've got certain friends in your life that, hey, you know, they're your friend as long as you're providing for them. But the minute you stop, where are they? When you truly need them, are they there? Do they answer that call when you say, I need you? Are they there? We tend to rely too heavily on what we think we need, and we forget God is what we need. We forget that Christ gave it all. Christ died for us to be one with God. And he's telling us to turn it away, turn away from all the waste, all the want, all the more, 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 all the distractions and the divisions that bring us together. He died for that, and he's telling us to turn away from it. In Galatians 3, it says, Before the way of faith in Christ was available to us, we were placed under guard by the law. We were kept in protective custody, so to speak, until the way of faith was revealed. Let me put it another way. The law was was our guardian until Christ came. It protected us until we might we could be made right with God through faith. And now that the way of faith has come, we no longer need the laws of our guardian. For you are all children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. And all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male and female. For all of you who are in Christ Jesus, and now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs, and God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. We put on Christ like new clothes. Those are what we need to seek. Those are what we should strive to be. It's to put on Christ's clothing and say, look, I am a child of God and I live for Christ. The more, 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 the distractions, the division, those don't matter because I have Christ where I need him. In my center, 
Christ is here with me, and that's what you need to show the world. That's what you need to show society. We've kind of gotten a bad rap lately. Oh, we're Christians. Oh, you guys, you have it wrong. Because we stand up for what we believe, because what Christ tells us is right. And yeah, being Christian is not easy, especially today. We get criticized, we get judged, but we've always been criticized and judged. We may have just had a little bit easier road in the past. Not always. But now it's time for us to stand up and say, you know what, we don't need what society is offering us. We have something 10 times better than what society is offering us. We have eternal life through Christ. We have to accept it. We have to come and say, Christ is my Lord and Savior, and he's going to be my Lord and Savior forever and be baptized in his name and put on his clothes. We have to have that. We can do lip service to it, but if we don't take it to heart, it doesn't mean anything. So he can, um, devil slips in, society slips in, and he shows us all that we could have. And it's tempting. Even Jesus was tempted on the mount. But we cannot accept it. We can't say we're going to choose society over Christ because then we are lost. And we have to stand up and fight for Christ and say, I'm going to live my life for Christ. I'm going to let everybody see who I am. And that while society is pushing the more, the more, the more, have a star on your belly and be the best, it doesn't matter. None of that matters. What matters is that we are children of God. We live with Christ in our hearts. And we show the world that that is the way to live. That even in the struggles we have, we find joy. Even in the struggles and the hardships, we have hope and we have faith because those are what it pulls us through all of those times. And even the good times, we can shine with the light of Christ. But we have to do it and we have to turn away from what the world and society and the devil tells us is what we need to survive and struggle or, and thrive because that's not right. So your challenge today is what is it going to take for you to turn away from what society says is what you need? What decisions do you have to make in your life to make that turn and to make Christ the center of your life to where someone can look at you and say, they have it going on because they have Christ in the middle of it all. They have faith. Because that's your testimony. That's how you get people to, sh- to shine and see Christ. It's through you. So what changes do you need to make? What do you need to tell God or ask God for help with? Because that's how it will happen. It's through God. Let's pray. Creator God, thank you for your son thank you for giving us the choice to follow you we know that every day is not necessarily easy you never promised easy lord help us to keep you in the center of it all and in the struggles know that you are still the very best option for us and that you only have your love for us and care for us at the center Help us to remember that and hold on to that through the thick and through the thin. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Now if everyone will please stand and join us in the hymn of response, He Touched Me.
us leave here knowing that differences and similarities are all good in your eyes. Help us to remember that it is you who matters and not what society says. It's in your name we go. Amen.